it's Bridget again. Anyway, we're going to talk about a couple things before we get started. Um, I am by no ways an arborist. Um, I became interested in urban farming about six years ago. Uh, I've taken two courses um, and done numerous backyard prunes for people um, in my experience learning. Um, I'm not a big tree, monster tree uh, pruner, um, but I just wanted to let you know that. Um, anybody can prune. Um, women, you don't have to be afraid of equipment. You can handle it. Um, the more involved you are with your uh, yard, um, which in the Anastasia book she calls the domain, the domain will protect you and help you, right? Because it's a living force. If you ignore your yard or leave the responsibility to someone else, their intention gets put in it. So if somebody's coming along in your yard and just whacking stuff down, it's not a very good energy, right, for your yard. It's not a very good energy for the energy field that you want to create. So... Um, both of the courses I took for pruning, this was the recommended book. This is an awesome book. It's called uh, Pruning and Training, the American Holder Cultural Society um, by David Joyce. And um, I can tell you this is a, a full feature book with everything that you could possibly want to know about pruning. So anytime that I come along something that I haven't pruned before, I can go ahead and pull my book out and take a look and um, find out what the best pruning is for that specific species of plant. Um, another thing too that you might want to do is you might want to get yourself a journal so that you can you know mark down what year you pruned certain trees, uh, what happened to them um, when they started to grow, uh, was their fruit bigger, was the fruit smaller, did it flower, did it not flower, so that way you know about your own yard and you know how much pruning you can do. Sometimes um, over pruning is necessary, but it also can create what's called a pruning response, which is an, a fast overgrowth. Um, so you want to keep a, um, some documentation on your yard and your different trees so that you can go back and remember. Another thought is you, you could take a photo of the tree, you know, and place it in your book so that you know exactly what it was that you were pruning and trimming. So not only do my, I have bring my spiritual tools, but I also have a hedge trimmer. I also bought this nifty thing, which is like a five foot electric saw uh, trimmer so that I can get out those higher limbs. Brand new electric, so I can use it. I have a tarp. So in case I'm you know, doing a couple day job, uh, I can open the tarp, I can put my tools on it and then cover my tools in case it rains. So I don't have to worry so much about in and out, in and out. Um, also, my chainsaws are going to require oil because they're electric, no gas. A little bit more sustainable and easier for me to handle. I also use medical grade prep wipes, but you can also use like a vodka or something like, like that. Or you could use like a lavender uh, with distilled water. Um, what you want to do is try to, you know, clean your tools off periodically because it you're doing surgery on a tree. So if you went into a surgeon and they cut you open, you wouldn't want them to use the same tools that they used on the last patient. You want fresh, clean tools. So if you have diseased trees, you really wanna make sure that after you're done pruning and taking care of the diseased trees, that you really, really use alcohol to kill any kind of bacteria that may be spread. So you want to get yourself some safety goggles. You also want to get some clothing that can protect you from the environment. I prefer overalls. These are waterproof. Some gloves that have good grip so you don't lose your hand grip. Um, also some good boots, right? Uh, because all the tools I'm going to be using are electric, um, Plenty you want to have plenty of electrical cords to get wherever you need to get so that you have proper energy. And then this is also the chainsaw that I'm gonna be using, which I just recently got, which I'm really excited about. It's an electric chainsaw. It has a 14 inch blade um, and it just requires oil to keep the blade lubricated. So for me, I can actually lift this and hold it up and cut through some pretty large branches. But I'm gonna leave big, big trees to an arborist, to a professional that can come out with gear, that can cut them down, and have the ability to remove them. 
Okay, so anyway, that's it with the tools, and um, let's get started. Go. All right, so a couple of the things that you're going to keep in mind when you're looking at, okay, like, what do I do with this? Uh, you want to make sure that you cut the dead first, right? So anything that may appear dead, good times to prune are in the winter time. That's why we're here in December, the end of December, January, February, great times to prune. The sap is all underneath. Uh, by the time they come out um, to start growing, um, they're going to realize they had a big haircut, so uh, they'll be able to have more nutrient, you know, to actually grow some new limbs, and um, their immune systems will be a little bit stronger. So, right now, when I'm looking at this, I can tell that it's had improper pruning before. Things are just, like, cut off in kind of weird places. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, go ahead and prune this up for you. Okay. Tree. And this tree has several issues going on with it. So I'm trying to figure out what would be the best way to handle this tree to get it to encourage growth and also to help it. One of the things that I see here is that it has kind of like an opening, almost like it was injured and damaged at one point. When I'm evaluating this, I don't think it's very good as far as disease. And it's also not a very good strong point for the tree. So, I'm going to actually kind of take a, um, a different edge with this tree to see if we can cultivate helping it to um, grow properly. Or give it another chance, so to speak. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do with this guy... Because this is also, it's been pruned improperly. So we want to actually try to get it in good shape so that maybe it might be able to heal itself. That wasn't a very good cut. Okay, so. Thank you. 